guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video. Today's video is featuring these Picket Fence products. This is Surprise It's Your Day, Sweet Holiday, and then I'm also going to be using uh, from the newest release, it's the A2 Rectangles Layering Set, I think is what it's called. Um, and we're just going to jump right into this little hack for no line coloring. So no line coloring is a learned skill and it can be very challenging. Here's a little workaround that I found uh, very early on when I wanted the look of no line coloring, but I still needed the like the comfort of an actual line. Um, and that is to stamp in a brown. So what I find is I chose a Distress Oxide. These are pigment... Um, and dye, like they're a hybrid, so they do dry back a little bit softer, but it very clearly gives us a line that we can follow. And for the most part, when the coloring is done, you won't actually see the line for the vast majority of it. Um, so this is in oxides work, the I'm distressings or distress oxides, they're water-based, so they'll work with um, any sort of alcohol marker. It's a solvent-based ink that does not work well with a alcohol marker. Um, so you can just go in once it's dry and do your coloring and not have any issues about bleeding. Um, I am using my Copics today, but you could color these any way that you would like. This would also work. Um, I don't know how well it would work for watercolor. You'd have to be pretty bold with your watercolor, but it would work with pencils just as well. Um, so here I'm going in. I know that I wanted to, I was going to, I'm going to use some fun colors for my frosting and for my flowers. So I wanted to keep the rest of the cupcake pretty neutral. So I just picked some browns. I like a little bit of a warmer brown, especially when I'm using a gold accent, which I am in today's card. So I went with the E50s family. For my darkest color, you could see that I really kept it mostly to the sides and to the bottom. As I move to my next color, which is my darker mid-tone, I'm going to start bringing that up to the top as well as going over that darker we've already put down. With anything that is ruffled, like this cupcake holder, this also applies to clothing. Um, basically, what you're coloring is the you have peaks and you have valleys. Your valleys are going to be the darkest portion and your peaks are going to be your lightest portion. And that's how you're going to get that ruffled dimensional look. So here, when you look at the cupcake holder, anything that has a rounded top is a peak. Anything that has a lower bottom is going to be your valley. That's where you want to add your shading to is the valleys. That's what you see me doing here. Now, with my lighter mid-tone, you do see me sometimes adding to a little bit of shading um, like to the center of the peak. Um, this will become lighter once I put my lightest color on there, but that's just so it's not a like abrupt stark contrast. Um, but you can also do a stark contrast. That's a look as well. Um, but so just going in and I am going to come back to this later because I didn't feel like I had enough contrast. I feel like the top kind of blended in with itself, but even how it is here, you can see, you know, that there are peaks and valleys. I just wanted a little bit more contrast, but I'm not going to see that until I get to the end of the cupcake and I realize that I need a little bit more. So for this, I wanted to do kind of like a vanilla cupcake so I'm I'm going with my darkest color is now one of my lightest colors from the, the cupcake holder. So my darkest color is an E55, and then an E53, and then an E50. And here is where I'm, I'm starting to see maybe it isn't as much contrast as I want. So I tried going in with the E50 to lighten up my peaks, and that just was not sufficient enough. In order to create some texture onto the cupcake, which I like to do, I just use stippling to do that. And that's just a series of dots. There isn't a right or a wrong way to do them. You have more dots closer together where you want it to be darker and less dots more spaced out where you want it to be lighter. Um, you can also do it, you know, with your darker colors. Do your darker color 
well, your little dots where you want it to be darkest, and then your lighter colors where you want it to be lightest. For the frosting, I chose to go with this kind of like rosy, kind of pinkish mauve color. I was having a little bit of trouble trying to figure out how I wanted to do this card. And so sometimes when that happens, I will find myself going and looking at color combinations to see if I can find something that will inspire me. And when I did that, I found a color combination that was like gold, um, a blush color, a mauve color, and a navy. And the flowers that are on here are hellebores, which do come in black, but the black can look purple or it can look navy. So I was like, oh, that would be really pretty. I could do the frosting in like pink and it would be a little bit more elegant. And so that's how we got where we are here. For the frosting, you can see I did, again, I started with my darkest color and I went into kind of like the little crevices and then I just extended the color out a little bit. I know that I'm going to color my sprinkles navy, so I'm not worried about coloring right over top of them. If you are coloring your sprinkles a lighter color, you may want to go around them, but I knew that my darker color would, would cover right over top. Um, and then I'm just going to keep extending that color out until we get to the lightest color, which will then I will fill everything in. If you feel like you need a little bit more dimension, you can always go back in, and this applies to any color, and you can always go back in with your darkest color and um, just kind of punch up your shadows. For the uh, greenery, I went with greens that were a little more desaturated, so that means they have a little bit more gray. They're not quite as bright because I'm going to have this bold bloom in this navy, and I have a pink, like mauve, which is already desaturated. So doing a bright green, I didn't feel like would look as nice as one that was a little bit more pushed back. I also created some triangles um, because uh, hellebore's um, leaves are a little wiggly on the edges, and so just in order to give them a little bit more dimension, I did some little triangles. Um, you don't have to do every wiggle, just you know, pick some wiggles and do a couple of little stripes toward the inside to give them more body. The lightest color here really did bleach out my darker colors. So for this one, just like I talked about before, I am going to go back in and kind of bolster up those darker colors. I did. I went back in um, with the mid-tone first to stretch out those little triangles. And then this darker color I am going to use to color in the smaller leaves. I could have blended them, in, and I have in the past when I've used this set, um, I could have blended them out with two different colors, but it just didn't seem necessary. I just colored them all one color in the darkest green to create some contrast, but it's still very complementary because the shade of green is in the bigger leaves. For the berries, I'm going to do the same thing. I chose the darkest um, of the pinks that I used, and I just did them one color because they are not the star of the show, they're just accents. This color combination might look a little bit crazy, but stay with me. <laughs> stay with me. So I knew that I wanted them to be navy, but I have, like, the navy set that I have, which is the B90s, is a little bit more gray than what I wanted, and I wanted it to look navy. So I went in first with black, and then I used one of my mids tones to be a C9, which is a very cool dark gray. I chose the cool grays because blue is a cool color. Um, and so I knew that that would work really well together. And I'm adding a little bit of shading where the petals are meeting the base of the flower. Um, and then I'm also adding a little bit of shading at the tips. This is going to help give them a more rounded appearance. And then once I have my black and my gray down, I'm going to cover over both of them and extend out that color with a navy, which is a B99. 
My highlight color is going to be the B97, and even though it seems wild, they really will look like a, a rich navy blue because we have those darker pigments that we laid down first, and then we glazed over them with the blue. If I tried to go in here and color these same flowers with the regular series of the family, so like a B95, a B97, a B99, they would look look much more like a cornflower blue because the B95 is so light. So to make them a true navy, I had to go even darker. Um, so don't be afraid to play around with your colors to try to get the color combination that you want um, because even though it might seem a little wild, it can still get you to where you want to go. Um, I do want to say we're already like 10 minutes into this video, but I have been sick. So if I sound a little rough around the edges, please bear with me. Um, I have not been able to do a voiceover in the last couple of days because my it was so congested and my nose would not stop running and I didn't figure you guys would want to listen to me sniffle. I know that I still don't sound 100%. Because quite honestly, I'm still not 100%. Um, but the show must go on. <laughs> the show must go on. Um, and so today is the first day where I have felt considerably better and I have been able to work like a normal work day. And so I definitely wanted to, um, you know, get this video up and out for you guys. I actually made this card um, last week, last week before I, before I got the bug, which I'm sure is brought home by one of my children, one of my loving precious petri dishes because that's what kids do right they just they get you um the other thing to note is the um surprise it's your day set when that set originally came out due to some manufacturing issues the dies were not released at the same time so i just wanted to let you know if you did um, purchase a set or maybe you were waiting to purchase the set because the dies weren't available. They are available in the store. Um, so if you were looking for those, they're there. Here, I just chose the darkest blue color and I'm getting my um, sprinkles with that. And I was super happy with the way that this came out. Here, I'm going underneath the sprinkles with the darkest color just to give them a bit more dimension um, and help them look like they're sitting in the frosting. And then I'm going to blend that out with the uh, next mid-tone, which I think is an R85, if I remember correctly. So at this point is when I'm like, I don't have enough to mention in this cupcake wrapper. Um, so let me, you know, add my details, which for me is with a white gel pen. I added some dots to the stamen of the flowers, also some little highlights on the sprinkles. Um, you know, you could certainly skip that step if you're not interested in it. The everything, you know, you can do whatever you like on your own card. I'm also going to add some highlights to the cupcake wrapper itself on the peaks specifically. And for this, I'm just going to let my pen skip. I'm not putting down a ton of pressure because I just want the highlights to be kind of here or there. And the best way to make them look organic is to put them down organically. So I put that in and then I'm like, I need some more contrast. So I am going to go back in with now, this is the darkest color, this E59, and really just kind of punch it into more of the top so that it really sets the valleys back and brings the peaks forward. So once I put those down, we're going to do the same thing that we did before and just blend them out um, with each consecutive color. And this helps to really give us a lot more dimension in that cupcake wrapper where it looks like the valleys are really sitting inside of the cupcake and the peaks are where the cupcake is kind of pushing out. And then um, that final mid-tone will be an E55. And I basically just, you know, fill in that entire section there and then add a little bit more. Now, with a white gel pen, you can color over it, which I did for the areas down at the bottom. So I just went in um, and did just a few more white highlights. For the balloons, the surprise at your day set is really kind of very playful. And the first cards that I did with them were very playful with kind of like rainbow colors and, and things like that. 
here. I also wanted to show you that you can take it to like a more elegant side of things. And so I'm going to be heat embossing these in gold on vellum. I thought that it would be just kind of like a little bit more classy. So I treated my vellum with my anti-static tool. Vellum is notorious for being super staticky, so you don't want to skip your anti-static tool. And then I am going to stamp these twice. I am using gold pigment ink. You could also use a clear embossing ink. Um, and then I am going to use a gold embossing powder to um, put the color onto them. I typically like to do mine twice just to make sure that everything is sticking where it needs to be stuck. And then I'll go ahead and pour the excess back into the container. And I always have my gun preheating so that way when I take it to the paper, or in this case the vellum, it heat embosses almost immediately and minimizes my warping. So I'm actually going to do that three more times. And then we're going to move on to the die cutting. So with the dies, I am using the Cupcakes Coordinating Die, the Balloons Coordinating Die. Um, I'm also using, like, I um, I used this in a video recently, that little uh, A2 layering rectangles. And at the time, I commented that it very much, to me, looked kind of like a trellis. And so I was really inspired to kind of play off of that. So I cut an arch and because I don't want to be wasteful, I always try to make sure that it's centered. Um, so even though I'm only using the frame of the arch, I can still use that leftover piece for another card. So here I cut out the first arch, then I lined up my second one and cut that out as well. And now I'm going to glue my arch to the kind of trellis style background from that um, rectangles layering set. And then anything that's hanging off of the edge, I tried to get it as close as possible to the edge. Um, anything that's hanging off, I'm just going to trim off with my scissors. I'm pretty sure you could try to line it back up perfectly with the die. Um, but this just seemed easier to me. So I'm just going to go in, follow, uh, you know, right along that edge and just trim it off. And then it's going to give me a little arch that kind of has the trellis behind it, which I think is really, you know, pretty fun. Um, my original intention was to do like a white on white with a gold accent. But when I laid everything out, I didn't love that. So I ended up just using the um, the navy background. For the sentiment, these are both from the surprise It's Your Day, and it says, It's Your Day, <laughs> big shock, right? And then Happy Birthday. I did these in um, the same gold embossing on the vellum. If I had to do it all over again, I would probably just do them on white because as my card layout turned out, uh, I really needed something behind them in order to pop them up with the foam tape. Um, so because I wasn't going to do the heat and like sometimes it's just all about overcoming your obstacles, even if you created your own obstacles, you know what I'm saying? So um, I ended up just cutting two um, of the die cuts, the coordinating die cuts out of white and then just gluing the vellum on top of those. It does make the white a little bit softer and does make it match the balloons a little bit more. Um, but ultimately, I don't know that it would be that big of a deal because I already have the white and the trellis and then later in the border of the card. Uh, but these do have coordinating dies, and so that's what I'm using here to cut them out. Um, this one, I think, like, I really like being able to use stamps and show them in different styles and... I think this one is definitely a different style than what we've seen this cupcake in. This cupcake comes from a holiday set, but you would never know that from the way that it looks here. Here, I wanted to add that gold accent, so I used my white pouncer to go in with some Versamark. I chose to do the Versamark and not the gold pigment ink because I knew I wanted a very organic edge. And so once I pounced on my Versamark, I jumped on my embossing powder, but then I'm just going to go in with a fluffy brush, and that's going to help me knock off um, some of the gold embossing powder in a very kind of uncontrolled way so that you'll have 
you know, little sprinklings of gold that maybe stretch out farther or better coverage here than there. And then I will just um, heat this like you would any other embossing powder. This just adds a little bit of extra interest and shine. And I'm always about the shine. Like there's never going to be a time where I'm like, oh, shine. No, thank you. That's just, that's just not how I roll. Um, so once this is all heat set, then we're going to move on to the building of the card. So originally, this is, you guys know, like when you're sitting down to build a card, you have an idea of how it's going to look in your head. And for me, seven, eight times out of ten, it did, that does not what happens. Um, so here, I'm just going to glue this down flat. This is kind of like our backer piece. It's going to give our eye a place to rest. And like I said, originally I had thought I was going to put it on white, but I actually really just liked it directly on the navy. So I glued that down flat. I am going to pop up my cupcake. Um, and this is using the foam tape from Picket Fence. Um, I thought I cut it narrow enough but there's like a couple little areas at the top where it was hanging over and rather than completely try to cut a new piece I just cut two little triangles out of where it was hanging over and that worked fine I didn't you know I didn't need to cut down the whole thing so I'm not I have not peeled off the backer yet I'm just gonna lay it in place while I get my balloons uh where they need to be so if you've never worked with vellum before, when you're adding adhesive, you will be able to see it through the back. So what you can see me doing here is adding just a few little dots that's actually right on the embossing line. Um, it didn't, it wasn't perfect. Like there are some parts when you look at the card that you can see where like the glue had kind of seeped out, but they're pretty few and far between. So I'm not going to beat myself up too much about it. It is a handmade card, not a store-bought card. Um, so that's my, pretty much my game plan for all of them. For the tails, I'm not too worried about that because there's very little of the tails seen in this card because they're, you know, tucked behind the cupcake. But I love that they have the transparency of real balloons that you can see the background and the color behind them. I think that's really, really fun. Um, if you wanted to color them on vellum, you could use your alcohol markers or alcohol inks to add some color to them. I considered doing that as well, but I really wanted the, like, the coloring of the cupcake to kind of be the star of the show. So once I have my balloons in place, I'm going to go ahead ahead and remove my backer from my foam tape. When this stuff sticks, it sticks. It's no joke. So I always add a little bit of liquid adhesive on the back of it to give myself just a little bit of wiggle room in case I put it down crooked or it goes some way that I don't want it. I need to have a little bit of wiggle room um, to save myself. Here's where I realized that in order to put the sentiment on, I definitely needed something behind it. So again, I'm going to go in, add um, the adhesive behind the embossing, and then put it down on white. I will tell you, you can almost never see the adhesive um, of the vellum on white or on lighter colors. It's typically on darker colors that you can see it really, really well. Um, so that's not something I was super stressed about. So I have this little happy birthday. It's your day. In order for it to be flush with the cupcake, I had to add um, a little bit of that foam tape to just one side, and then I'll be able to add glue to the other side for it to sit firmly on the cupcake. And I'm just using the grid mat on my glass mat to make sure everything goes on straight. Um, if you wanted a little bit of a bigger sentiment, instead of doing the two here, um, the sweet uh, holiday has a happy birthday in there as well that is a little bit larger that also would have looked great here. Uh, just depends on what kind of look you're going for. Um, so once I get this on, then the only thing left to do is, of course, to add more shine. <laughs> Everybody's different. You do whatever you'd like to do. Here I added just some clear sparkle to the balloons because I thought that was fun. I also added it to the cupcake. And then to accent the um, sentiment, I am using 
what is this? I think it's Sands of Time. I'm going to double check. Yep, that's what it is. And these are really great neutral gems in a couple of different sizes. So I used those to accent my sentiment. And then um, I realized that I did not love the card on just the navy, that I really wanted it to have a white mat. This is not ideal, okay? Because we have already popped something up on foam. But... If you have a trimmer like mine, it can be more challenging than like a guillotine trimmer. However, if you can get it to even just score a line, then you can cut it with your scissors and it will still be straight because you just follow right along that score line that's there. The first one I was able to cut all the way through and then, you know, just kind of bend it off the edge. That second one, I was not. I had to um, go in with my scissors and trim it, but because I had the score line from the blade on my trimmer, I could just follow right along that score line and it was still straight and a clean cut. Um, any fuzzies that I might have had from the other ones, I also got those. And then I matted this on a white card base and I much prefer having the white border to just kind of bring everything together with that white background, white sentiment. You get what I'm saying. Um, and then that will be the last step for putting the card together. So I hope if you have been kind of hesitant to try no line coloring, that this little trick hack, you know, helps you to be a little bit more courageous in giving it a try. Um, I know it helps me. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I always appreciate your time and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.